having proved separation theorems, uh, which separate convex sets strongly from each other, we are now in a good position to prove separation theorems where we allow um, one point um, to be on the boundary of the set and still find a hyperplane so that the, the set is entirely on one side of, uh, of the hyperplane and the point is either on the hyperplane or on the other side. So let's formalize this by formulating a theorem. And the theorem is a separation theorem of set and point. Okay, so let C be non-empty and convex and let the interior of C be non-empty. Okay, um, here we, we replace our, uh, the, some of the conditions by this um, condition that the interior is non-empty. Technically, for the validity of this theorem, um, this condition is not necessary, um, but it might turn out that the, the result is otherwise not particularly useful if we don't refine the formulation. Uh, therefore, I um, add this condition and it makes the proof a lot, a lot easier and less technical, even though it will still be less direct than this strict separation theorems. Okay, so this is, these are the assumptions on C. And now we say let X be a point which is not in the interior of C. And um, here the, the, this implies, since we have not um, uh, uh, assumed any, any closeness of C, that we, we are allowed to, to, point, uh, to, to place the point X on a boundary point, for example, of C. And then the separating hyperplane we want to construct will have this form, okay, with the normal vector A. Okay, okay, so let uh, this be the case. Then there exists uh, a vector A in H with norm of A equals 1 such that and now again this the separation property um, but this time if we say a y um, for uh, for y in c then um, the lowest possible value so the infimum over y in c of a y um, should be just greater or equal to a x Okay, so this is our, our separation theorem for now and the point x, as I said, can be on this hyperplane or it can also be on the other side, in which case then we would even have a stronger result as we have shown. Um, yes, I just wanted to make sure that I have all the, all the requirements here. So um, our like our plan to prove this is a bit more more delicate than in the in the um, strong separation uh, setting where we just put a, put a projection and then this will almost entirely solve all our problems. Um, here we are using this, um, but since we since the set C is not closed. We cannot, use, we cannot directly employ projection, the, uh, projection theorem or the strict separation theorem. So uh, we have to apply this to um, the results, these, these auxiliary results, to a closed set. And, and so 
we will apply strong separation with a closed set, um, so this must be the closure of C. Um, and then X can be in the closure of C because it might be on the boundary, so we have to approximate X from outside of the closure of C. So we have an approximation of X from um, outside and outside means outside of the closure of C. And then lastly um, when, we, when we achieve this uh, we get a sequence because this approximation will only be by, by a sequence so we get a sequence of, of separating hyperplanes and we have to we have to find like a convergent subsequence which will then give us um, so the, the the limit point uh, will give us the the desired hyperplane here so whenever we we we, we have a, a, a sequence which which is outside of the closure of C um, and it converges to X we will see that w uh, whenever this converges to a limit then we will this this limit will actually also be uh, separating hyperplane but not strictly separating it will just be separating in this sense um, okay so the a will be given as a limit um, of this approximation. Okay. So in order to to apply this, we have to actually show a little bit more than x not in the interior of C. Uh, this will be the content of our uh, lemma here, which we will prove before we start proving the theorem. So lemma. So whenever we have uh, X not in the interior of C, we also want to have that X is not in, in the interior of the closure of C. Uh, so we will show that in our setting of C, the interior of C is equal to the interior of the closure of C, which means that whenever we want to approximate this, um, we don't even, we, we don't, we don't, uh, we do not only uh, avoid, or we cannot only avoid uh, points in C, but also points in the closure of C. That, is, that will be important. Okay, so let C be non-empty and convex and let the interior of C be also non-empty. Okay, this implies that C itself is non-empty. Then um, the interior of C is equal to the interior of the closure of C. Okay, so let's prove the lemma. And we are proving this uh, by using the, the exercise which, um, where you showed that whenever we have a, a point in the closure and a point in the interior, then everything on the line between those two points, except possibly for the closure point, is in the interior of, um, of the set C. But uh, let's, let's just first um, clarify some things. So let x bar be a point in the interior of C. We have to, um, we have to use this, uh, this assumption here and just give some uh, element just a name. Okay. So we have to, to prove the, the equality of two sets. Um, one direction, so since we have to, to basically show, we have to basically show two, to show two inclusions, that one set is contained in the other and the other set is contained in the, the first set. Okay, so 
Uh, let's first show this inclusion. Uh, this is very easy. It's just C is a, is a subset of the closure of C, obviously. Um, and therefore, um, the, the interior of C is the, since um, the interior, the C is a smaller subset, the interior must also be a, a smaller or equal subset. So the interior is a subset of the interior of the closure of C. Okay, now let's get to the interesting stuff, the, the other direction. Now we have to show that um, the interior of the closure of C is a subset of the interior of C. So let Z be a point in the interior of the closure of C. And then we have this, this x bar in the interior of C. So let's just draw a picture here. Um, so we have this x bar here. And then we have the point z. And the point z is, um, is contained in a ball here. Um, and the ball is, is entirely in the closure of C. What does this mean? Well, we can draw a line between x bar and z. And we can overshoot a little bit because um, every, uh, there, is a, there is a bit of, of, of space uh, before we hit the, the boundary of this ball where we are guaranteed to be in the closure of C. So, um, uh, we arrive at this point here, um, which is a bit further away. We call this point Z prime, for example. So this point here. And then we can write Z as a convex combination of Z prime and X bar. That means that Z is uh, on this line which connects Z prime and X bar. Z prime is still in the ball, which is so. So Z prime is guaranteed to be in the closure of C. X prime is in the interior of C, and therefore Z, which is on this line, is also in the interior, using the exercise. Now let's, since we have now got, got the intuition, what we are doing, let's let's write this down. So, um, since um, Z is in the interior of yeah let's let's just in the interior of the closure of C um, we have if we if we overshoot a bit so if we take z and we take the vector from x bar to z so we take um, z minus x bar and we scale it uh, such that we don't we don't leave the ball. So you can always find an epsilon. You can even explicitly calculate this epsilon if you want. Um, if you're interested, you can do this as a homework. Um, so since this is in the interior, we have this point, and we call this, as I said, z prime, is in the closure of C. Uh, for epsilon small enough. As I said, you can calculate um, an explicit value for epsilon given that you know the size of the ball. Um, okay, now we have z prime um, depending on z. And now we want to write z as a convex combination of z prime and x bar. Uh, yeah, x bar. Okay, so Let's uh, go to the other side. So then we have um, Z prime is 1 plus epsilon Z minus epsilon X bar, which means that Z, if, if you just put Z on, on one side, Z is equal to 1 over 1 plus epsilon uh, Z prime plus epsilon over 1 plus epsilon uh, X prime. So you know that 
uh, not x prime, x bar. You know that x bar is in the interior of C. You know that uh, z prime is in the closure of C because it's close enough to the, to the point z. And you know that this is greater than 0. And you know that these two, 1 over 1 plus epsilon and epsilon over 1 plus epsilon, um, add up to 1. So now by, um, by exercise uh, set 1, and I think it was problem 3, you can, um, you can conclude that this point z, which is on the on this line between z prime and, and x bar is in the interior of C. And this concludes our proof because we started with let z be in the interior of the closure of C and we concluded that z is actually in the interior of C. Okay, so we have proven the other um, inclusion, so from right to left. Okay, so this concludes the proof of the lemma. And now we, we can um, go ahead and prove the theorem. Okay. Now, we have x is not in the interior of C, and we have shown that interior of C is equal to interior of closure of C. So we have this. So x is not in the interior of the closure of C. What does this mean? That there is no ball with a, with a, with a whatever small radius which is contained, in, uh, a, a ball around x which is contained in the closure of C. So for every ball, whatever small radius, you can find a point in the ball which is not an element of, clo of the closure of C. So you can, you can write this for all n greater or equal than 0, there exists um, a, a point xn with um, norm of xn minus x is less than 1 over n and xn is not an element of the closure of C. What does this mean? Well, xn obviously converges to x as n converges to infinity. And it means by the uh, strong separation Actually, this follows from two lines above. By the strong separation, so it's, it's better to, to write an air and here. Um, for all n greater or equal than 0, there exists uh, a, um, an, a, a, a separating hyperplane given by this normal vector a n. And this a n has the property that, first of all, norm of a n is equal to 1, because we had this in the statement of our, our separation theorem, and we have the property that the infimum over y in C of a n and y is greater than um, a n of x n. So we use the separation theorem for x n, for every x n, and the closure of C. Um, so I should write the closure of C here. Okay, actually this is actually the same for, for C and the closure of C, but uh, f using the separation theorem we, we, all, we only get this for the closure of C, and we don't need more. I will show you that. Okay, so now we have everything we need um, in order to, to go ahead and, and, and go to the third step. We have a sequence of a-ns. The sequence of uh, a-ns, uh, they have all norm 1, so the sequence is bounded. So um, there exists 
subsequence, and we can call the subsequence A N K uh, with index K of A N with index N uh, such that A N convergence converges to an element of A. Uh, a and K, sorry, converges, the subsequence converges to an element of A. Uh, every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Okay, so what do we have? Norm of A is, yeah, the, the norm of the limit of A and K. Uh, K goes to infinity. And the A, the a and K uh, the norm is a is a is a continuous function, and therefore we can pull out the limit. So the limit of the function value is the function value of the limit by continuity. That's that's how continuity works. So this is limit of uh, k to infinity, and here you have norm of a and k, and this is one. Great. That's the first thing we needed, and now we have to prove this. So let y be in C. So y be in C means y is also in the closure of C. Yeah, we're lucky. Um, so um, this thing me just means that for ele every element of the closure of C, a and y, um, or, or this implies that a and, y, a and y in a product is always greater than a n um, x n. And since this holds for the closure, this also holds for y and c. So we have um, we want to we want to get to a y. Let's let's therefore write um, a y as well. A is the limit of a and k for k to infinity. Okay, with y. Here we have the same situation. The inner product is continuous in the first component. Therefore, we can write limit k to infinity a n k y. And now we know a n k y from this relation, just, in, uh, just the subsequence um, with indices only n k instead of n. Um, this this implies that uh, yeah we have a limit here so um, all these uh, this this greater becomes a greater uh, or equal since in the limit you can uh, come arbitrary close and the limit therefore yields equality so you get greater or equal than and now we have um, a and k and x and k. Problem is, you don't know a priori that this sequence converges. I mean, the sequence will converge, which is the next step actually. But you know this. You, you don't know this like now. So what what can we write here? Not the limit, but what always exists is the limit, uh, the lim inf or the lim sup. So the lim sup is the greatest possible limit, and the lim uh, lim inf is the lowest possible limit. Of a, of a subsequence. Um, so this is certainly always greater or equal than the, the, the highest possible of these things because we re re replace this inner product with some something smaller. Okay? So the highest poss possible thing of the smaller, of the, of the smaller thing can, can only be um, less than the, the greater thing. So you can write lim sup here. And lim sup will always exist. Um, a lim sup of a sequence is, uh, always exists. And actually, this thing converges because a and k will converge to a. That's how we define a. Um, that's here. And x and k is a subsequence of x n, and therefore converges to x. And now also by the by the continuity of the inner product. We have Ax here. So we have shown for all y, uh, y and c, Ay is greater or equal than Ax. That's this if we 
write this if we write the the infimum. So uh, if we just um, take the smallest possible value for all y and c. Okay. And this concludes the proof of our separation theorem. You, you, you saw that this is a bit more indirect since we have to do all these approximations, but in the end uh, the result can be obtained by applying the strong separation theorem to our approximations.